So at the last vlog, we talked a little bit about the process behind the screen, how we do a recording. This week, we can also talk about what sort of equipment we are using coming up. Hi, it's Taryn. And Stella from Maple University. Welcome back to our weekly tabletop diary. As usual, thank you so much for your comments from last week. Now, this week, kind of like continuing from what we talked about last time, what happened behind the camera, I'm gonna share you something that is a little bit different. So it's a little bit nothing to do with board game, but um, about what sort of equipment we do use on our filming, mostly starting from our first ever video. Now, you think, what do I need to know that for? Maybe you don't need to know it, but maybe you're just curious. Maybe you want to start your own YouTube channel. I don't know. So let's share what we start with, with the phones that Taryn is using at the moment. Yeah, so from a camera perspective, mm -hmm. uh, we started for the first few months. Mm -hmm. It was quite a while on this one. Uh, using a Samsung S7 yes. as the filming. No tripod, no camera. Uh, sorry, not yeah, not camera because it's a phone. No tripod, no camera, no microphone, and no lightings. Yep. So that was everything. And I can't was, imagine that. That was you holding it. Um, and we would have moved. We would have moved up to an S9 mm -hmm. at some point. Um, yep. For a little bit, and then with a phone tripod. Yeah, with yep. a phone tripod, so a fairly flimsy phone tripod, but oh, yeah. enough to do the job mm -hmm. uh, before moving up to your first proper camera. So obviously we're not using that to record at the moment. This is a Canon, Canon EOS 80D. So this is a DSL uh, camera. So I know nothing about camera. I've got this and then I had to learn. So I went to YouTube and research how to use camera, what to do and what the settings are to actually record. So I learned everything from the scratch, from getting this thing, which is the um, grey card. I call it grey card. I don't know it's, I'm pretty sure it's called grey card. This... Well, you've ever called it to me. Okay, well, it is. Maybe it is then. So we're pretty like primitive. So this grey card helps us to uh, set the white balance right. So you take this photo and that you can just YouTube that. Um, how to set white balance. So rather than auto white balance, which I sometimes use if I record out outdoor if I want to get it really quick, but uh, most of the inside recording, I use this to get the white balance correctly. So it's not too white, not too yellow. Um, yeah, like most times, I probably remember 99% of the time. Mm -hmm. And this camera is a, uh, as I say, Canon 80D. Because this is DSLR camera, there's a limit of half an hour to record. And I found out it's because something to do with the law, something to do with um, the fact that they, not the law, it's like the tax purposes or something. So they registered it as um, a DSLR camera. They don't have to pay as much tax or something like that. I don't know exactly. So there's a recording of half an hour. On it, it doesn't record 4K. It records um, just normal like, what's that 1080 whatever it is that the resolution is right now um it does it's really good it's got some zoom as well and it does take good photo and um good because the nature of us if you watch our vlog last week we tend to do shortcuts rather than long so that works with uh, with this camera so even though there's a restriction and that's fine and it's really good it's quite heavy um but it's very versatile what i am looking is to uh, the microphone socket that's really important um, there's also headset socket there's also uh, a, a socket for remote control mm -hmm. which is actually really important to do in um, to do our many cuts because otherwise if you touch the camera it'll move yeah. um, I've got the tripod shoe in there um, and then the other one is and the remote only came I forget when we got the remote oh but, yeah that's actually later you know, on as for well. a long for yep. a long time we probably yep. for the first year we did have to be careful hitting yeah the start button to avoid shaking she was shaking yes and um the except remote when there was there. no tripod because then it shook all the time <laughs> and there's a, a remote 
uh, plug here so um, so I've also have a wireless one and which is also there this is for my camera that I'm using right now to record this vlog and um, there's also a connection to HDMI so this comes later as well where we can rather than looking through this screen although there's no way I'm gonna record through this little screen but rather than the screen I connect it to TV so we can see in big screen exactly um, you know where the edges are because it's really important yep. for um, some of our videos yeah it speeds up the ability for me to set, set things up, up yeah. from behind the table and be able to see it yes because it was all verbal communication between us on whether we were in frame yeah previous that's correct actually oh, I can flip this which is good as well this is like a flippable so the screen you can flip it but then again if you can see it I can't see it so connected to the TV there's this little um, HDMI out which is really good as well so this has been our camera for a few months now has it been a year would have been a year I think you got it December 18 mm -hmm. yep now now I'm recording with Canon M50. So it's lighter than this, smaller than this, a similar interface which I'm familiar with. And it has a 4K video. Not that I'm always my not that my computer always able to handle 4K videos it goes slow, but that's I sometimes the need to have sec, uh, second camera to record two things at the same time and phone is kind of like it just shuts off on its own for some reason so and that actually what you're watching right now is I feel like it's better quality pictures crispier and for Crisp, crisper crisper crispier what did I say <laughs> it's crunchier no <laughs> it's crisper pictures is crisper and it's so light for traveling and I've already got this um, gimbal which actually holds not only phone but camera which is my Canon M50 wait for this gimbal I can travel with it um, like yeah it's a hybrid gimbal which is really handy and because that camera is that small that's why it works with this one as well um, the downside for the Canon M50 is that it does not have uh, a plug for remote so we're relying on a, a wow. wireless thank you Tarrant well, which um, we feel like sometimes is not reliable. It's still 99% reliable. Uh, I can also use my phone as a as a remote control. It's just got different timing to the other. Different one. timing. That's it. Give us enough time, we'll get the hang of it. Yep, it has the microphone button, which is really important. But it doesn't have the headset button. It does have the HDMI output, which is very important. Um, and headset we've only really ever used uh, in on location yeah. filming. And that's also if you uh, you're there with me, but most of the conventions, I don't have. Yeah. yeah. So that's really good. Um, very light. Um, I pro I definitely do not bring this anymore for conventions. Um, that's that Canon M50 is probably just 370 grams. Like for a a decent DS DSLR camera, it's just got smaller lens, which is fine. But 370, you can't go wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm more of a camera girl um, as I say so I talk about it it's like oh, camera. so the settings similar with these two and the recording limits the same so that is what I've been working with now moving on to microphone microphone hasn't it hasn't developed that much right we um, from zero microphone we went from using the microphone on the phone um, now we that's... tried a couple of wireless microphones, mm -hmm. got a lot of interference, and it took us a while to understand. To figure that, yes. Yeah. But essentially, we work from a Rode shotgun microphone and mm -hmm. have for about a year and a half. Yeah, now. that's actually the best way uh, to do it because we don't have like a really fancy studio just with soundproof. So we found that it's right there, right, right now. So, um, mm -hmm. It works really good with. Um, just capturing the sound that we need and then trying to filter out the sounds that we don't need. Yep. Uh, we're starting off with another Rode microphone with Squirrel. I can't remember That's what right. it is. I forgot the, the small squirrel, one. Yeah. yeah. That's with the phone. Now, when we moved to this camera, we used the same microphone. Uh, didn't actually, it picks up some static. That's right. It interfered really badly yeah. with that. So uh, it seems to be a common issue. Um, so that's why I got that. Um, the Roach shotgun cell microphone um, 
Because this one had more settings. You could turn yes. the decibels Yeah, down I can turn the signal whistles. And then yes. amplify it through the bit that doesn't static. So. Correct. So I used the microphone um, as the main capturing rather than the camera itself. So I turned the cameras down um, and then the microphone's up. So it mainly coming from the microphone. And I started going to board game conventions. Now that comes another issue. So that's why uh, where I got a first wireless one I got is the Boya. I can't remember exactly what it is, the Boya. So it's got one, um, uh, sorry, one, I always get this confused, receiver, one receiver and two transmitters. It doesn't work well. Apparently there's some issue. I have to return that one. Now I've got a Rode one, which I have with me. This little ones, this Rode um, and microphones. I can't remember what it's called. I'll find out, I'll probably find out. So that works really well. So one plugs into the camera and this goes to the, the top of the shoe and uh, there's some flip there and then this is the one that I take and the quality of the interview of the, just check it out if you want, our later interview video has been great, it, um, it kind of like uh, doesn't pick up a lot of the other noise, it just focuses on us, it could be a little bit loud or a little bit or not loud enough, um, you can adjust the volume here um, up and down a little bit somewhere in one of these. Uh, and it charts with uh, Type-C connection, which compatible with a few other equipment, so it's really handy for traveling. I usually have a USB charger for traveling, so um, it just one to the wall and then a few cables the um, two different outlets. I'm uh, I'm officially the technical person here. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> so that's the microphones. I'm going through these stages of microphones. Now the light. Do we start with one light? Uh, we started, we just started with our lounge room overhead light mm -hmm. and there was one, so that was pretty dim. I think we used natural yeah. light in a, through the window from one direction at one point, so that yes. didn't work very well. And then yes. one of our early videos, we used the torch light on the phone, which actually didn't really? look... Really? Yeah, oh, it was, yeah, it was did. airlines. It was airlines, that's right. Yeah, it, didn't, it didn't look too bad, but mm. yeah, we, we leveled up on well, light. Well, it doesn't look too bad. We leveled up on lights pretty quickly. Yes. Um, by video five or six, we mm -hmm. had um, a couple or something. I think like we that. got two. Two to start with. So we had two. They sit on tripods. They're four by fifty-five watt. And they um, um, with a softbox they, cover. Yeah, yeah. Softbox is it's quite important because uh, especially uh, have some with them because then the light doesn't go too harsh, especially for board games. Maybe I find. Because a lot of board games, so we film a lot on the table and that causes a lot of glare sometimes. Yeah, when um, you've got smooth surfaces, that yeah. can be glare. Yeah. And what, so yeah, that definitely helps that. And what mm -hmm. we found, we then got a light that we intended to uh, hang overhead. Mm -hmm. So it would point straight down mm -hmm. and that glared really badly. And mm -hmm. we, even with the softbox, we yes. couldn't get around that. Mm -hmm. But we're fortunate in that our room here is painted bright white mm -hmm. and so we were we took the softbox off that mm -hmm. overhanging one mm -hmm. aimed it up at the ceiling mm -hmm. and it just sort of is a natural softbox so yeah, now we yeah. have that and Absolutely. there's one one other led light that we've yep. gotten since yeah that's just a smaller we, one which is a bit smaller but yeah we aim those up at the ceiling and okay. we get pretty good reflection off those so yep. we have two coming down like that and then two pointing up at the yep. ceiling and, and we get some decent yeah. illumination out of that. It's still, it's not as easy as that though. And the smaller lights, um, I have in mind that that was probably for traveling because it's quite compact and then it's small. It doesn't have the, the softbox. It's got some sort of cover. It's got a, uh, a diff of, um, diffusing frosted, cover. Yeah. Frosted, yeah. Frosted cover. But it's kind of like small. It, it probably wouldn't something that you want to, or it really depends on the effect that you want to get. I'm just sharing what we use. It might not be for you. And it might help you if you want to do something like that. But sometimes you just get to play around with the, um, the softbox as well, the lights. Um, because there are some games that give you a little bit more glare and depending on the camera angle, depending on the um, positioning, depending on the light. So it all depends. So play around with it. Um, and we, we can't really attach anything. If you're lucky enough, you can just like, can be or can be bothered or you can attach lights to the 
ceiling or anything like that that's probably um, the ideal situation which is like sitting on a tripod um, at the moment so we've covered cameras we've covered lights we've covered other bits and pieces yeah uh, tripods we've gone through quite a few tripods ah, yes. getting uh, bigger and stronger as the cameras have gotten bigger and, bigger and stronger yes um, our most recent one has an inbuilt uh, lever tilt arm, tilt arm that yeah. comes across you've probably seen it in some of our posters as well yeah. that's really good for the overhead um, overhead recording yeah so you can sort of track through our back catalog going from broad angle more and more overhead as mm -hmm. we got better equipment for doing that with mm -hmm. we had a an attachable tilt arm at one point which was quite heavy yes proved problematic uh, we had a... it doesn't actually stay it kind of mm. like move I don't, I don't know maybe it's me doesn't actually set it right yeah we also had a slide scroll bar yes which we've hardly used because it tended we could probably use it now that we have the uh, clicker actually that's right yeah um because it was quite those components because we were clicking so many things together mm -hmm. you would get a lot of movement when we press the stop start button yeah with the remote it's that's okay yeah. there's good for pretty shots like a panning shots sort of thing mm. uh, but there's also my gimbal now so i can do sort of like panning shots mm. and oh i forgot to say the good thing about the canon m50 is that it's got the in body i, I don't remember what it's called but the stabilizer is better so the stabilizers in this one ADD is in the lens itself it actually has the um, stabilizer on and off uh, switch in here but in the Canon M50 it has an inbuilt one it's a better one so it's more stable plus with this that's that's really good I'll, I'll play around it takes a while but that's um, that's what it is so it doesn't stop here it's um, we keep improving we keep looking at like every now and then I'll look at it and then um, and then the next one would be um, live streaming or maybe when we have New equipment will probably update you or not. So I also want to know what equipments you use. Maybe you can share it with us. You can talk about it. Uh, maybe we have been doing it so wrong this time. Who knows? Maybe we can learn from you. Mm -hmm. So this is the idea of um, the vlog for this time. Um, just sharing you what we've used, what we do, um, and maybe exchange information. If, if you want to share yours, you don't have to. Oh, um, obviously I don't come from professional photographers or videographers I learned all this by scratch by you think looking at YouTube as well um, and Karen would help me a little bit with that and um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah I'll just tell Karen okay because I'm doing the camera works most of the time yeah yeah, yeah my I've got a lot less knowledge on that technical side mm -hmm. um, so I let you, yeah, I, if you want, if you saw me be blank through most of that vlog, <laughs> I will when check talking him about like the <laughs> M84 20 well, no, no, no. no, it's That's, like Canon M50 yeah. and then Canon 80D. It's a lot of numbers there. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so uh, it's not, not my forte <laughs> area, okay. but I reap the benefit of, of course, the, um, mm -hmm. the quality of the equipment. Yeah, so it, it actually works. So um, you probably want to start if you're just starting. Um, you probably want to start with just the phone, and then just as you grow, and then you probably get better. So I probably don't know if I recommend for you to go straight to get expensive equipment. You can always go like cheaper equipment on eBay, like the the softbox. Get it from eBay. They'll do. So that's it. So if you enjoyed this, please hit the like button as usual. Subscribe to us. You can hit the meeple in the corner and hit the bell so you won't miss anything from us. I also share my reviews, experiences on Instagram. So it's find me there at Meeple University. And that's basically it. See you next time.